Basma Kudmani, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Uh, the Syrian conflict has been raging for more than six years. Syrians have been killed in their hundreds of thousands, and yet President Assad is still in power and on the offensive. He's not going anywhere anytime soon, is he? Or do you actually believe he can be toppled or removed from office still? We never use the word toppled. We never say he should go through military means. That is not what the Syrian people want or the opposition wants. And I'm speaking here of the moderate opposition, the one that has put out a political solution, a vision for a political solution, who goes to Geneva to engage in peace talks and is willing to organize a transition and a controlled and uh, negotiated departure for Assad. Uh, Assad is a war criminal. Everybody knows it, even if he's not going to the International Court of Justice for the okay. moment, he still is the criminal court, I'm sorry. Uh, even then, he is uh, still uh, allowed by the Syrian people to, uh, be, to benefit from a negotiated departure. And that is not calling for violence. So you... we're not talking about uh, Assad ousted violently. In April, when the U.S. president launched airstrikes against a Syrian military airfield, the first U.S. attack against the Syrian government, you wrote in favor of it, saying that President Trump's actions were a major first step to end the chaos and lay the foundation for a peace process. You said there's new pressure on Assad and his backers. It's been more than four weeks since those airstrikes. It doesn't look like much has changed on the ground in Syria. He's even using that same airfield to launch fighter jets. So Trump's attack changed nothing. Look, the opposition still hopes that there will be a peaceful, negotiated, controlled transition in Syria. Otherwise, we will have a uh, chaotic Syria and a chaotic region for the next decade or two. The strike that Donald Trump decided to conduct was a punitive strike for the use of weapons banned a hundred years ago and banned by a convention, by an agreement signed by Russia and the U.S. But you and the said it lays the foundation for a peace process. Arsenal. It hasn't done that, that at all. That didn't happen. Well, we've tried diplomacy without any punitive action under the previous administration. That never made anything possible. We do hope that for once, the Syrian people finally see that the regime can get some form of punitive action for using chemical weapons, for illegal behavior, and for, humanita for, the, for crimes against humanity. Now, that is exactly what happened when Donald Trump decided to strike. Do you really have faith in Donald Trump to resolve the conflict in Syria, to do what Obama couldn't? Donald Trump, a man who until a few weeks ago was pro-Assad and pro-Putin, a man who continues to block Syrian refugees from entering the United States. Look, I think Donald Trump is learning what the Syrian conflict is all about. He thought that it was all about ISIS, and he is discovering that it's all about Assad, really, and that ISIS is a consequence of Assad, is a result of Assad, and he, I think, behaved in a principled way. For the first time, unfortunately, the previous administration, President Obama used to speak principles, never implement anything. The Syrian people have been subjected to crimes, to war crimes and crimes against humanity. It sounds like you Hospitals do bombed, have children faith killed in and Trump. suffocating. But let me ask you this. Will you, as a member of the Syrian opposition, condemn Donald Trump's ban on Syrian refugees? You say he's principled. Why should I condemn or approve of a whole package? He is wrong in not admitting Syrian refugees. I wish he would do so, and that is what the opposition works to convince the administration to do. But on the other hand, when he conducts the kind of action that is required to get some the regime to take seriously the option of a negotiation. Because that is what Donald Trump said, and that is what his Secretary of State said in Moscow. Many people Here's would say taking Donald Trump at his word is a mistake. And violated, 
well, uh, you, we cannot judge on intentions. All we can judge on is acts. There was an action taken at the right time, the right kind of response that needed to take place and has needed to take place for the last six years. It happened. Now, what comes next is what we hope Donald Trump is preparing in a serious way. We hope he links the fight against ISIS with the negotiated solution. That's what we need to see now. According to human rights groups, in the month of March, the US-led coalition in Syria killed more Syrian civilians through airstrikes than ISIS and Russia. And yet you say you welcome US military intervention in Syria. You want more US airstrikes, even though it's killed more Syrian civilians than the Russian Air Force and than ISIS. I do not wish to see one Syrian killed, either by the coalition or, or by a, an American strike. And that is something that we all regret. We are put in a position where we have to approve of retaliatory action for the violation of humanitarian law and conventions. With respect, that that's not an answer to my question. Uh, my April question was, strike. how can you ask it for more US military action when that is killing, in the month of March, more civilians than the Russian Air Force did, more civilians than ISIL did? I'm not sure you heard me well. I did not ask for additional strikes in Syria. I am only saying that what we need is some action whenever Assad uses barrel bombs or chemical weapons. We need the protection of civilians in whatever okay. shape or form you that say, has not happened. Hold on, happened. hold on. You're saying and whatever shape or form. the international community is responsible for protecting Sorry, can civilians. We, can we clarify this? Are, are you a supporter yes. of the US-led coalition's airstrikes in Syria? Yes or no? The US-led coalition is striking ISIS. Are you a supporter of those from strikes? striking the regime. I, but in both cases... It's the same US-led coalition. It's the same US Unfortunately, we're in a situation aircraft. where we need air cover. I don't know what you are, uh, what you are trying to get I'm here. I'm trying to we understand are, why a member of the Syrian opposition is not bothered by the fact Assad. that more civilians were killed by the US-led coalition in March than by the Russians or ISIL. I'm not hearing you outraged about that or condemning the US for that. I cannot condemn action against a terrorist organization. What I can regret is that we reach the point well. of, of a chaotic situation and a stronghold of ISIS that's where exactly nobody can get what the ISIS Russians out say when they area, kill Syrian civilians. Through military means, they say we're okay? targeting terrorists. That's exactly what the Russians say. They say we're, no, killing, we're killing terrorists. You're saying as long as the Americans are targeting terrorists, well, it doesn't matter if Syrian civilians die. No, I am not saying civilians should should be should die with terrorists. This is but that's this what's is, happening, uh, Basma. In March, in, in, in March, the U.S. killed more civilians to say. than ISIL and Russia. The civilians who are killed are not targeted. Unfortunately, the Russians are targeting hospitals. I don't know that the coalition is purposely targeting, deliberately targeting civilians and deliberately targeting hospitals, markets and children. Now there's a difference here. I regret every Syrian death and I would like to see this, uh, this end in a way where we use minimum force. Ground troops, Syrians would like to lead the battle against ISIS on the ground. Unfortunately, the strength that ISIS has acquired because of its presence in Iraq, because the regime won, let Assad let it grow and allowed it to develop its presence in Syria, led us to a situation where we need military action. Okay, but you would accept, would you not, that while the Assad regime may be responsible for the majority of civilian deaths in Syria and for the bulk of the war crimes in Syria, rebel groups have also killed civilians and have also been accused of committing vicious war crimes, haven't they? Oh, yes, indeed. I think they should also be, uh, these investigations should be led and they should be tried. But is, does this help us move forward? Is this just t s throwing the uh, blame on groups and saying, oh, here's somebody else who committed a crime, so it's okay for us. The implicit message is, I don't think, saying it. It's I don't okay think Amnesty International crimes, and Human Rights Watch, when they document war that. crimes by rebels, I don't think they're saying Something... it's okay for Assad to carry out war crimes. I think that's a bit of a smear to suggest that's what human rights groups are doing when they point out I rebel war crimes. I agree with you, and I, of course, but what you are suggesting, the parallel you, put, you made between the two is perfectly legitimate. Everybody here should be tried, but nothing is happening, neither these nor the others. 
we are calling for the prosecution of all war crimes committed by anybody in Syria. We know there were killings by some extremist groups in Syria and we want those prosecuted. We want sanctions against these people. We, don't, we want punitive action also against them, but we want legal punitive action. So prosecution is what we want, because otherwise there will be no reconciliation in Syria, no back to normal, and that's where moderate opposition wants to link up with the rest of the people. You have said in the past, and I quote, we cannot get rid of Sunni jihadis, Daesh, al-Nusra, if we have this poisonous presence of Shia militias on the side of the regime. You have accused Iran of fueling jihadists on the opposition side. But are you seriously suggesting that if Iran and Hezbollah and the various so-called Shia militias uh, pulled out of Syria, uh, all of the foreign ISIL and al-Qaeda fighters would just forget about fighting Assad? They'd pack their bags and go go home tomorrow morning? Really? No, they will not pack their bags and go. We will need to fight them, unfortunately. And we know that our uh, side will have to pay a very heavy price and heavy sacrifices to fight the jihadis. But it's, it's not a war that we can lead unless we have those sectarian militias, Iran-led militias on the other side, pull away from those front lines. The day that happens, believe me, the fight against the extremist jihadis will start. And that fight is going to be hard, but the population is determined to get rid of these groups. They are the poison in, the, in our ranks, and they are fueled by the poison on the other side. But it's, I reiterate and I confirm they this may is be exactly poison in your happened, ranks, continues to happen. But they also dominate your ranks. They dominate the military side of your side. The yeah. strongest rebel fighting groups are either the jihadists, quote unquote, or their Salafist fighting groups. They're the Ahrar al Shams, the Jund al Aqsas, and the rest. There are a lot of, quote unquote, Salafists, Islamists uh, of various varieties dominating the rebel fighting group. The secular rebels aren't the dominant fighting group, are they? That's the reality. The secular rebels will lead the just fight when it is possible. They're sitting, waiting for that to be, become possible. And they can raise tens of thousands of fighters to lead a just war against these groups. Believe me, we are only waiting for that, the moment when there will be a solid ceasefire, a credible ceasefire enforced with mechanisms of enforcement that are in place. At that moment, the dynamics on the ground will change. But we need those Shia militias away from those front lines to start that fight. This is about to happen the day a ceasefire is signed. And everybody knows that. Russia knows it. The United States knows it. And, and, but it, we still don't have the conditions to start that. Basra Kadmani, thanks for joining me on Upfront.